Hello, this is Andrew Perkins, and over the next several videos I'll be doing a series on Ruby on Rails. Uh, I'll be using Rails 3.1 to create a blogging application with posts, comments, and tags. Uh, I'll assume that you already know the basics of the Ruby programming language as well as have Ruby and Rails installed. If you do not, you can go to rubyonrails.org and click on the Get Started button and they have some good information on getting Ruby, Ruby Gems, and Rails installed on your computer. Uh, with that said, we can get started on our uh, building our application. So we need to uh, switch to our terminal or command line prompt, whatever you're using. And I already have a folder created to hold my Rails application, so I'm going to use the cd command to change directories into that folder. It's called Roar Tutorials and in here we can run the rails new command and tell it to create a blog application uh, this can be named whatever you want it's not actually going to create something specific for a blog uh, this is just the name of the rails application so we can run rails new blog and that will create a bunch of files and folders for us uh, it also runs a bundle install during the creation of your application for you which is nice as you don't have to do that as a separate step uh, this is new for Rails 3.1 I believe the bundler what that does is allow you to gives you an easy way of using a gem file to manage the gems that your application is going to use so as you can see it says your bundle is complete and our application is now ready to be used so if we switch over to our text editor here's the blog folder that the Rails new command generated and here's our Rails application. Uh, down at the bottom, here's the gem file that you can use to manage your gems for your app. We can close that. And we'll take a quick look at the directory structure here of your Rails application. We have this app folder at the top. This is where you'll spend most of your time. Uh, we have an assets folder to hold all of your images, JavaScripts, or style sheets. If you've used Rails prior to 3.1, you're probably used to the images, JavaScripts, and style sheets folder being under the public folder. Those have been moved into app assets for Rails 3.1. Uh, we also have a folder for our controllers, our models, and our views. Uh, we have a config folder for configuring our Rails application, such as the database and routes. Uh, you can think of routes as a way of mapping a URL in the browser to our controllers and actions. Uh, we'll touch on that in a little bit more briefly. Uh, we also have a DB folder. This will hold your database schema as well as any migration files. Uh, we also have a test folder. Here's where you can uh, write tests for your application. Uh, testing framework comes built in uh, right from the start when you generate your Rails application, which is really nice. Uh, so let's get started and actually create something. We're going to create our first controller. Uh, we're going to do a simple hello world, but we're also going to set ourselves up for future videos uh, for building out our posts for our blog first. So we're going to create a posts controller. So let's switch to our terminal or command line prompt. And we need to make sure that we change directories into that blog folder that we created for our Rails application or that uh, the blog folder that Rails generated for us actually and in here we can run the Rails generate command or you can run Rails G for short and we're going to tell it to generate a controller and our controllers name is going to be posts uh, the Rails naming convention is that your controller should be in plural form so that's why I'm calling it posts you can optionally pass in some additional action names you can think of an action as an individual page for your controller. So we could have a posts index page and then a posts show page. And when you run this command, it'll also create those respective view files for those actions. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to create the controller and we'll create our actions and views manually uh, just for the sake of learning. Uh, so we're going to run Rails G controller posts and that'll create several files for us once it finishes. There we go, we can see it created our posts controller. 
part of the naming convention, in addition to calling your controller in the plural form, is to also append underscore controller to the file name. And the full name is just posts underscore controller. And it's just a simple Ruby file, so it ends in .rb. Uh, it also created a views folder to hold our posts views. It created some test files as well as some JavaScript and CSS files as well. So let's go back into our text editor. Under the app folder, under controllers, we can see our posts underscore controller file that was generated. And it's just a class. It's called posts controller. Uh, it is named directly after the file name. It uses camel case rather than an underscore. And that extends the application controller class. You may have noticed that we have application controller here in the controllers folder as well. This class extends action controller base. Action controller base is going to give you a bunch of methods that you can use inside of your controllers. Uh, the application controller itself is useful for putting anything that you want site wide. Since all of your controllers inherit from it, uh, they'll be able to use anything that's inside of your application controller. I'm going to close that out and we're just going to stick with the posts controller for now. We're going to create our first action. An action is just a, a method inside of your class. So I'm going to create a method here called index. I am following a naming convention of calling my action index. Uh, Rails has seven restful actions or routes that they use. Uh, index is one of them. And this will be the default page when someone accesses the post's URL in the browser, they will by default end up on the index page. Uh, we're not going to do much with the action, we're just going to leave it empty for now. Uh, just by defining the action, we now actually have a post's index page. Uh, we do need a view file for it though, so that we can display something in the browser. So let's create our view file under app, views, we can see we have a posts folder. This was generated for us when our posts controller was created. And this is where we'll store all of our posts view files. So I'll create a new file in here. Uh, since our action is called index, the naming convention for Rails is to name our view file index as well. And it uses a .html .erb extension. Uh, ERB is, stands for embedded Ruby. This allows you to use HTML, uh, embedded Ruby, CSS, and JavaScript inside of your view files. For now, we're just going to do a hello world statement so we can see how the controller interacts with the view. So let's create a h1 tag here and we'll say um, for now our blog and then we'll create a p tag and we'll say hello world and we can save it. Uh, we now need to create a route so that we can actually access this in the browser. So in the config folder we have routes.rb and inside of here we can define our routes for our posts. Uh, inside of Rails there's a concept of a resource route that is we can think of our posts as a resource so we can retrieve posts, we can view posts, uh, we can create new posts and modify those posts and destroy them. We can think of them as a resource that is uh, able to be manipulated. Uh, so we can create a set of routes by using resources and then we pass in a symbol with the name of our controller which is posts. And this will create a set of seven routes for us. One of those routes is of course index. Uh, the other six are show, new, create. New and create are used for creating a new post, of course. And then we have edit and update, which are used for modifying a post. And then we have destroy, which is used for destroying the post. We'll be covering all of those in future videos. Um, so now we, that we have our routes defined for our posts controller, let's access this in the browser. We first just need to start our Rails server. So we'll switch to the command line again, and we can run the Rails server command, or you can run Rails S for short. And this will start up the WebBrick server, and we can see that our application is available on port 3000. So if we switch to our browser, 
we can go to localhost colon port 3000. And this brings up the index page for our Rails application, which is letting us know that Rails is working. And we can click this link to view about our application's environment. Uh, it has information such as your Ruby version, gems, uh, what version of Rails you're on, and some other things. Uh, so let's access our Hello World page. Uh, it's very simple. We can just go to slash posts, and that'll take us right to our index action or view. And there we go. We have Hello World displaying in our browser. And if we take a look at the source code, we can see here's our h1 tag that we created and our p tag saying hello world. Uh, the rest of this HTML that you see here, the whole structure for our document is being created by the layout which Rails gives you by default. Uh, we'll be covering that in a future video. So there's the basics of setting up your application and doing a simple hello world. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.